Hello everyone, it's me again, Adora Stephanie Wodo, and welcome back to my channel. About today, I'm telling you about how to identify frenemies yes frenemies what are frenemies you would ask well frenemies are those people that say they're your friends or act like your friends but in real sense of it they're your enemies so how do you spot frenemies okay so i'll give you a few points of mine and um you know tell me what you think number one one major way to find a frenemy they're constantly talking behind your back so you have this friend who thinks, um, well, otherwise annoying, otherwise loud, otherwise a flirt, otherwise this, otherwise that, but they never say to your face. So they jump at any opportunity to discuss this with other people about you. There's something going on in your life. They don't speak to you about it. They don't contact you. They just run with stories about you, whether true or false. So typically something happens to you. And uh, let's say you lose your job at work and there's news around town that you lost your job. And then your friend doesn't ask you, ah, babe, what's going on really? I heard about this. What's happening? Or you're sad. What happened? And then you tell them, they just run. Hmm. They say she lost her job. Well, can you imagine? I knew she lose that her job. That girl, she goes to work late. She talks to this. She's always this. She's always fighting people in the office. Story, story, story. And then the story goes from that friend to another person. And then it's everywhere. And no one even knows from you the actual person if it's true or not so people who keep constantly talking behind your back whether things you told them in confidence or made up stories watch out for them they are not your friends they're your frenemies <laughs> number two they lie a lot so when they've told too many stories they can't keep up and when you ask them it goes from um that's not what i said that's not how i said it that's not who i told i do not say that it wasn't me she's making up stories she's lying on my head hmm auntie I probably have recording of what you said when you said it, but then they're telling you they didn't say it or they're telling you what well, they did. But the problem is that your friend said this too many stories. They're always lying to cover up something. Watch out for those types. Thirdly, their emotional needs constantly outweigh yours. Constantly. So they're always whining about their own problems. Oh, yeah, you'd not call me too. Or, oh, you know, also check up on me. Or, oh, I haven't even eaten since last week. And then you're talking about you not eating this week. Like, it's not a competition. We're not competing on who has checked up on who more or who is always there for who more. Like, at every opportunity, they need to remind you that they have their own problems and you're whining about your problem. And for a second, pause on your life and think about the other person. Just be there. You know that saying of a friend in need is a friend indeed, right? Yeah, that. That particular one. Find those ones who are always there indeed, especially when you need them. Not the ones that are there when you have to party or there's a drink up or there's a link up or there's a trip to go on the ones that are there when there's nothing or when you're just crying those are the ones you want you should also look out for those ones who constantly this one is very important constantly point out negative things about you mm -hmm. they claim it is constructive criticism my ass that's bullshit <laughs> like literally you know that thing they say in Nigeria, everybody get them for body. We all have it. Our excesses, our extras. But you know that friend that is constantly telling you all the negative things about you? You're too loud. You know you're always overdoing it. You're always shouting. Every time you're always posting. You're always... It's never the, you're actually a great communicator. Or, um... I think you're really pretty, <laughs> like I am. <laughs> or I think you do really good makeup. I, don't know, I want to learn how to do makeup like you. Or I, don't know, I want to learn how to make outfits like you. I love the way you always dress. Man, girl, this girl, you know how to put a thing to... Uh-uh. They don't see any good one. There's nothing really good about you if they have to think about it. It's always all the bad things about you. Well, maybe your boss at work doesn't like you because you're too loud. Have you ever thought about it? Eh, well, maybe all the guys you've dated left you because maybe you're really loud. You should stop being loud. Sometimes I really think that this your loudness is the problem you're facing. 
always, always, always negative. They pass off critical and uh, cruel criticisms as feedback. You know the feedback um, rule that says compliments, criticize, compliments. Start with a compliment. Train well. You know sometimes you might change this or this, but at the end of the day, I think you're a great person, man. You don't really have you know. Don't just always come out like, well, I think it's your fault, Sha. The way you always do this thing, Sha. Those people, they secretly hate that thing about you. And if they hate that thing about you that much, they shouldn't be hanging around you that much. Like, if I'm that annoying, make other friends. Another one, extremely important. Not always obvious, but very, very evident. They aren't happy about your achievements. You need to know this. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys a little story. You know how... Um, so, um, people say, uh, don't post stuff about you too much. Don't post about your happy moments. Don't post about good things happening in your life too much. Enemies. Uh, if you watch my last post, you remember when I talked about this negativity, yadi yadi yeah. So we should all hide our achievements. We should work hard and hide it. And nobody sees it. Why do I work so hard if I'm going to hide everything? Now you have these friends who <laughs> you just got promoted at work. Oh, Adora, you got that promotion. Hey, yeah. Congrats. You can so tell the lack of enthusiasm in their voice. Oh, wow, you bought a new car. Hmm. A hey, big girl, oh. Oh, wow. Where are you even getting this money from? Hmm. Wow, you bought this house. It's nice, Sha. You go engaged. Are you serious? Ha! He proposed. Let me see your ring. Hmm. It's fine. They ain't happy you're getting married. They ain't happy you bought a car. They ain't happy you bought a house. Like, you know those friends are always everywhere. But then once something great is happening, they are just like, you know, why her? Why not me? She ain't that pretty after all. Like, I'm prettier than her. I have better heaps. Why her? You know, and you can all, or you can so smell and see it, like when they're not there, when things are important and things you really need them for, or things great are happening in your life, and suddenly they just disappear into thin air. You're starting to think, what's going on? The sad truth is, a lot of people in our circle are in constant competition with us, and we don't even know. So you're literally going out there, living your life, posting your best life, like took her with your baby girl life. You know, you buy this new bag and you take a picture in front of your house. Ah, about a step out, blessed day, hashtag pretty girl. That's just you being happy. But someone else is thinking, hmm, look at her. She will not be where she is and be saying, come and see her post. Have you seen Adora's uh, new post? Do you see what she just put on her WhatsApp story? Why must the whole world know that she bought a new bag? What's she feeling like? This hair she did now will not hear a word. Yo, go buy your own bag or do your own hair. Like, we're not in competition. I just did a hair I like and I love it. Why do you feel like you have an opinion about everything? Every damn thing I do. So look up for people who genuinely don't seem... I mean, some people can't fake it. Don't get me wrong. But you would know when someone is genuinely happy for you. You would see it in their enthusiasm, in their questioning, in their being there, in their ways they can help you celebrate, how they can help you, you know, be better. The problem is there's a lot we hear, but we shut it out. We need to start listening more. Ah, another one, very important. They are passive aggressive. You know those kind of friends that make all those sarcastic comments in front. I know there's a thin line between being rude and just and just being pretty much rude. <laughs> yes, it's a pretty thin line. So you have those friends that you guys go out in public and then they say things like, eh, please you sit down, I beg. We've seen enough of this, your ass. Well, I was just joking. Now I'm just playing. No, she's not just playing. Bitch be hating on your ass. Like legit people say the truth with jokes you know those jokes like i was just joking mm -mm. you are not just joking sarcastically you said how you feel about something about me oh yeah we're smiling now we have seen now we know you are fine eh, this makeup you did now will not hear a word just tell me your makeup is nice don't go about like i mean the people that just make all these funny comments. like i said they hide them under their joking but sometimes some of those jokes are very um detrimental or very downgrading or very disrespecting you know i mean it's beyond how they even make you look in front of other people or whatever it's more about how they make you feel about you you know and then when you look back and think well hold on why would she even say that you know what i mean i mean see there's a clear difference when people do when like your friend who doesn't have all the other characteristics of your friend and me 
can say something to you and it's genuinely the truth. So see, me for instance, if we go out and you say something like, um, um, Adora, you can't go on this ride because it says it's only for people less than 100 kg. And we both know you're not 100 kg. I can laugh about that. I don't think that's rude. I think that's a statement of fact. I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. But when you say something like, ha, please yo, don't sit on this chair to break. You know this chair cannot carry you. And then everybody on the table laughs. Yeah. Some people find that a bit rude. I, I'm personally, I'm the last person you can tease with weight, so it doesn't bother me. But I know people they can get to. Now, people that make all those kind of low, sarcastic comments and make it ex especially when they want people to laugh at you about it or make fun of you or your body or your size, you don't want to be around those people because they're constantly going to keep doing that. You know the sad thing about it? They do that to put you down to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. Now you have the ones who take advantage of you. He's always, where are we going to? Who is paying? When is your next party? I don't know, when are you calling me for this? They always just want to take, take, take. Please, can you help me do this? Can you help me pay for this? Can you borrow me money? Can you borrow me that your weave on? Can you borrow me that your shoe? Can I go? Which one have you done for me? You know those friends that it's always their birthdays and you buy them gifts. It's always their anniversary, their husband's anniversary, and you help them plan the birthday. It's always their baby's dedication. You're always there. How many are they there for you? Seriously, think about it. They're there when things are good, when they don't have to spend or make an effort to assist you because it's free. But when you need them to put in the work, turn down for you at their expense, they're not there. Beware. There are a lot of those people. Most of us have this friendship of um, parasitic friendships, exactly. So people are just leeching, leeching, leeching off you. Like taking, 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 taking. What are you giving back? That's a problem. So you need to watch out for that. Last but not the least. <laughs> yes. Watch out for the ones that go around snitching on you. So you know how you tell someone something in confidence like, oh, so... I and my boyfriend had sex yesterday or I and my boyfriend, um, you know, plan to do this after marriage, but I don't want anyone to know. Like, it's just something I'm thinking about. We're bantering over it. What do you think as my friend? And then tomorrow you hear that same G style say, that's how she now said that both of them are now going to, why is that information out there? P.S. P.S. The person I'm even talking to you about doesn't even know I'm talking about this. And you're helping me carry the matter. What's the aim of that information? Why that piece of information? You might not hear it, but you might hear it when it's too late. But the point is when you find out, you need to keep them at arm's length. Because they are what? They are what? Friend of me. Uh -uh, look who just came in. Auntie, guys, I'm going to have someone that come, will come on this show. I think some of you have seen her in some of my episodes. So let's know if she has any frenemies or if she has any tips Hello. or in what frenemies or what to look out for. So Mimi, I was just telling my viewers what to look out for in their friends to know who is a friend mm -hmm. and who is a friend named me. <laughs> frenemy. Those ones that will stab you in the back. I come and smile. Hi, Mimi. How are you? So do you have any frenemies or have you spotted any frenemies in the past and cut them off? Or what do you think people should look out for to identify frenemies in their circle? Well, um, frenemies, they do exist. They do exist. Like people that, you know, you think um, they got your back, but then hmm. when you need them the most, when life hits, you, crickets. <laughs> you start hearing crickets when you need them. Um, I think one way to spot um, a frenemy mm -hmm. is to... Um, see how they react when you need them the most like i just said or when the chips are down or when yeah. the chips are down i think that really exposes them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so what kind of characters do you see give an example of what kind of thing can happen to you and what you would expect from a friend and you know if they don't do that then how you know that that person is not really after my um say for instance uh if i achieve something probably a promotion at mm. work or um, like your wedding, mm. you know, you, your wedding coming is coming up. You expect them to be um, supportive, supportive, 
you know, uh, then you find out the pool that you were banking on to be, be supported. Yeah. In fact, let's talk about that. Let's rewind a little bit because I think, honestly, what someone told me recently was that she never knew that weddings or marriages are such a big deal. Like, people are so... Um, envious of people getting married and this is not just in our generation like you even see cases where mothers and aunties are beefing each other because your own daughter is getting married and my own daughter hasn't gotten married so marriage seems to be a big issue amongst people so do you, do you think like it's a big deal when you have a couple of single friends and you're getting married do you feel like some of your other single friends are not genuinely happy for you because uh as the singles <clears throat> you're leaving them in the singlehood yeah. And you're trying to get married and they are not even in a relationship. Yeah. Do you ever feel like that? Has that ever happened to you, feeling bad that your friend is getting married and you're not dating? Or have you ever seen friends who have acted in a certain way to one of their friends who was getting married and just felt like, you're supposed to be all over this person. What's going on? Actually, um, so it happened to one of my friends. Mm. So she was getting married. Okay. She was close to someone. Mm -hmm. They were close colleagues at work. And in fact... Um, this her friend even introduced her to the person that, that she's she getting, getting married, married to. to. And then <laughs> somehow they just fell out because of one flimsy excuse. That's mm -hmm. when she now knew that, come on, as in, then you're not my friend in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because um, what actually what happened was uh, she, the girl was said compla complained that my friend didn't tell her the date of, of the, the wedding. Of the oh, wedding. God, just yeah. something flimsy. Kind of you know, but if you're my friend, is it not just to be like, hey... Um, and it's not like if she didn't tell her, she told her finally, but she was like, Oh, someone else had heard, heard before, before me. me. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. People will feel like, So I'm not important enough. Why does Miriam know and I don't know? So, where do you place me? It's like, what we talk about, no, about? But, but then again, we are friends, true. Like, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm just saying, I understand what her vex is. Some people uh, can be a bit petty like that. Like, why would she know and I don't know? But the truth but, is, that person knew probably for different reasons. For Maybe the person helped reason. her pick a dress, or the person went to her to see the flower person, and that's how she the, managed the, that personal The time I, I, she had told that one, and the time she told this her friend, it's mm -hmm. not like one big gap or anything. Like, it's, it was something, no, it was obvious that this girl just became bitter, bitter over the matter. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Another thing I think people should watch out for, it might not necessarily be a sign of a friend enemy, but it's just... It's just not a good sign a friend should have. When your friend feels offended by something you've done to her and doesn't speak about it to you, but just goes around carrying beef. Beef. Or carrying... It might not even carry beef because maybe they might not even be fighting with you, really. They'll still hang with you and have drinks, but they're just carrying that grief in their minds about mm -hmm. something you did to them a while ago. That's the worst. And even more so... So I'm angry at Miriam for eating my Indomie. Yes, because that's a big deal. Don't ever eat my Indomie. And she doesn't tell me she's angry. She's actually bitter about it, but she doesn't show me. She doesn't, ah, okay, oh, this Indomie self. And then it ends. And then the next thing, I'm hearing this a month later from another of our friend who says, ah, well, Miriam is not really happy with you because one time she ate your Indomie and the way you made such a big deal about it, she's never forgotten about it. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Indomie? That month? Like, and, and this Miriam has been sitting on my chair and doing videos with me and drinking my wine and I don't know she's angry about Indomie. Yo, guys, girls, like, see, this life is too short to carry beef. Because the truth is, you might be being angry about something that the other party doesn't even know you're angry about. And that's the worst. Like, if I know you're angry, then I understand that we have beef. Mm. But if I don't even know and you're angry and the worst thing is you're still relating with me without me knowing that you're angry... That's a problem That's right scary. there. And the sad thing is, like I said, God forbid, I might just die tomorrow. And I start thinking, shit, we should have made up. Wow, I didn't even speak to her before she died because of Indomie. It's the most ridiculous thing. Life is too I short. I think so. um, maturity has a lot to, yeah. to do. So people just say, I'm not confrontational. I mean, I don't yeah. know how to talk to her. That one just talks anyhow. If you bring it up now, she'll insult me. The truth is, they I insult you. But say, like, I'm that type. They know me. I'm very loud. I'm very in your face. Like, if you piss me off, anyone watching this channel that knows me, if you piss me off, yo, I'm going to drop it like a pack of chips. But the sad thing is, or the good thing is, I say what's on my mind when I feel it. I tell you how I feel. I tell you I'm pissed about something, and I move on from it. Like, tomorrow we can be out having chips and fries again. But people carry things in their heart. See, this heart... It's like, a, it's like a hard drive. It's going to get clogged up at some point, yeah. and it will crash. 
you need to detox you need to let go and you need to let go soon and to be honest if you say i don't really care it doesn't bother me why are you discussing with other people it truly doesn't bother you but the fact that you're telling that story to others it bothers you so please talk to the person that did the thing to you explain how you feel and they might understand they might not that's the mm. truth they might apologize they might not but yeah. at least get it off your heart so when it's being talked about to me they're like well she told me about this thing anyway i thought we had resolved it but clearly not so on that note look out for the frenemies in your life yep they are toxic they are and demonic. if you are a frenemy change change <laughs> Try and grow all those childish behaviors are not necessary, you know. Mm -hmm. So, just try, it's not easy for some people, but you have to make the efforts. Like, if you're having any grudge against someone, just you know, find a way to tell them so that it, you just clear your conscience and, and all that. It's not necessary. And if, if people are talking about someone you don't like, you don't necessarily have to contribute. So, that's a yeah, she can be like that sometimes, but you know, I just. No, you don't need to. You don't need to go in. Hi, you put a, a door on the table. Let us dissect. Give me fuck a knife. That girl. Hmm. See her fake breast. See her big head. There's no need. You don't get a word for it. And you can actually tell a story about something Adora did. See, there are two different things. Don't get me wrong. You can say, oh, actually, I'm not very happy with Adora because the truth is, on the other day, she did this to me. She did that to me. I understand when people say you save a lot by not telling your own side of the story. But sometimes you just tell that to clear the air on whatever it is that must have happened or how you feel. And I respect that. Everyone, we're humans. We're not superhuman. So everybody has emotions and feelings. If Miriam did something to me and someone brings up Miriam to me, I'm like, ah, I don't know. Miriam, Sha, let me be honest with you. She might be nice to you. But to me, this is what she did to me. But I don't judge people based on that. It could have been the vibe I gave her that made her give me that, that vibe back. But you find out on your own. But I won't sit down and say, Miriam is the devil. Eh, Miriam, don't go near that again. In fact, I've had people come to meet me and ask me about girls that I don't have a very good relationship with for reasons best known to us. And they want to date these girls and they're telling me, ah, do I, what's, the, what's the story about this girl now? Tell me about how I like her. I'm always like, no, go and find out. Yeah, but you're my G now, you know the girl. And I, the truth is, like I say, the relationship I have with this girl is different from the relationship you're going to have with her. Secondly, she might have been horrible to me a year ago, but that's a year ago. Just like me and Miriam said, if you're a friend and you change, she might have changed. It's very unfair for me to paint her bad yeah. a year down the line when the girl has repented and just destroying her image. You go there and research on your own. I'm not in the position to tell you. And like I said, she might have acted a certain way towards me. Doesn't mean she'll act that way towards you. Yeah. Our relationships are all different. The dynamics are different. So please don't be that party pooper. Don't be that name spoiler. Don't go about trashing people's image and saying what you don't know S-H-I-T about. You don't know me. You know me on social media does not mean you know me in person. You see me on the corridors at work does not mean we're friends or you know me. We party together and drink doesn't mean you know me. Get that right. If we don't have a conversation and I tell you things in honesty, please don't go around describing me to people because you do not know me. That story is not me. And those of you that listen to descriptions, yo, <laughs> do your research yourself. Don't let people destroy something that could be the best thing in your life. Hear yeah, from the horse's mouth. On that note, we will call it a day. Thank you for watching my channel again. And please subscribe to my channel. Like this post. Leave a comment. Um, put on the notification uh, bell so that whenever I post something new, you get to see it and see my pretty face. Smile with me. Until we or I come your way again. God bless and have an amazing day. Adora loves you. Mwah. Bye.